Welcome to my cult. Uh, so, this is a newer game that has come out, Cult of the Lamb, made by, or published by Devolver, who always seems to have very, very interesting games uh, that they choose to publish. And so, um, I was really drawn to it. They, they made a demo for it at some point, uh, and I ended up watching or playing the demo uh, here on the channel, and I was really contemplating making a full, like, let's play of it, but uh, I was like, mm, I don't know, like, just let's plays are kind of, I don't know, not really my style anymore, and I mean, I don't mind doing them every once in a while, but it has to be kind of like a short and sweet game. Uh, and this one honestly turned out a little bit shorter than I was anticipating. Uh, so I might have been able to get away with it, but just being able to take my time with it and play it at my own pace and everything was definitely uh, a, a better experience, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's super cool. It's basically like a, a I guess a, a management sim, like a you you create a cult, of course, and then you sort of induct followers into it and. Uh, you, you know, you obviously build everything up. This was all just regular land at some point, just nothing here at all. You have to sort of, like, cultivate the area and sort of, you know, build up, make people houses and everything, and, uh, as you sort of go, you get, uh, devotion, which is what normally, oh, my outhouse is full, um, <laughs> you get devotion, which is normally what you would get out of any of these, like, statues or, like, the big statue here in the middle. But unfortunately, because I have now officially uh, gotten all of the upgrades, which I think I can look at. Yeah, there's, like, a whole upgrade tree of stuff that you can get. It's not super big. It seems maybe a little daunting here. Uh, but honestly, like, doing the management stuff for your village and everything or your cult is so much fun that I ended up doing it more than the actual crusading in the game, which is, I guess, mainly supposed to be like what you're supposed to be doing throughout the gameplay but um it kept me so occupied that uh, i ended up probably getting most of my cult stuff done before uh i was even like you know supposed to like do certain things like i was you know there's basically four different areas we can go up here to the top um, and then you can actually, you can use this to fast travel. There are different areas in the game, but most of them are just kind of like little shops or whatever. Um, or just, you know, each of the areas has something that you can kind of do there. Uh, mainly the bottom one is for like fishing. But uh, I, would, I would say really that's pretty much the only thing that you do besides just spending money at shops or whatever. But uh, you can see there are these, you know, four doorways, one on the right, one right here. Uh, this one is like the very last one for like the last you know area and everything um and then you have these two over here this one right here is actually the one you very first start in um so we can kind of show you a, a quick run here so you can see it's placing nine rooms you come in it's going to give you um a random melee weapon uh these are the gauntlets they're actually kind of cool uh they do more damage on that very last attack of the combo which is kind of cool uh and then this is actually one of the best um, spells, but there's uh, there's curses. They're called curses, uh, and you get a random curse and a random melee weapon at the beginning of each run. You basically just run through each of the, you know, the rooms of the dungeon. You fight enemies. You, I don't know, gain different kinds of stuff. You can cut down grass and different kinds of things in each of the rooms to get different kinds of resources um, for your village. And then, yeah, I don't know. You just try not to die, pretty much, <laughs> and then try to make it to the end so that way you can fight a boss. Uh, there are also these guys right here uh, who give you tarot cards, which are basically just like power-ups that you use throughout the mission. So you can kind of use those if you end up getting like a really good run and you get a bunch of really good tarot cards. Once you've actually beaten an area completely, uh, you can basically do like an endless run. Um, obviously, you can't do completely endless because you do have villagers or whatever that you need to worry about back home. Like they will starve if you don't feed them and, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, I don't know. There's It's just pretty cool. Like there's just a lot of stuff to worry about, a lot of stuff to do. Um different enemies and stuff like that of course in each of the different areas and each area has its own like sort of resources and stuff and uh yeah i don't know just getting getting good rng on your runs and stuff is really fun so this one is dead enemies bodies explode damaging other enemies i don't think i've ever actually rolled that before so that's kind of cool and then uh yeah you can see uh this is what the actual like moving room to room thing looks like this is not like a new concept i've played many games that do stuff like this but uh, it's actually pretty cool like so uh, you can avoid the, you know, the fighting stages 
if you really want to, the ones with the swords. Uh, but, you know, I can go to... I'm, I'm, I think I'm kind of full up on people right now. Maybe not, actually. I think I can go... And I think I can get a couple of extra followers. It's not like a big deal. This guy always ends up selling uh, people and then he sells them for a discount whenever you find him in a dungeon. So that's cool. Uh, if you do play the game, make sure that you're going around in these rooms specifically. Uh, or maybe not this room specifically, but most of the like the special rooms that aren't like crusade air, like the, the fighting rooms or whatever. Um, break, break all the stuff in here because they'll give you different kinds of stuff. You get different kinds of meat or just resources, you know, wood, bones, you know, whatever the case may be. So those are really, really helpful. Uh, moving on, we can get, normally these give you more devotion. Um, you can also break those statues once you have completely finished an area and it will just take you straight to the boss of the area, which is kind of cool. And uh, there are, uh, there's a couple of achievements that I'm actually missing that I would like to get for beating each of the big bosses without uh, taking any damage. Obviously, that's going to be pretty difficult to do, uh, but I think it's doable. I don't think it's too bad. Um, I just need to get like a really good run to be able to do it, of course. But uh, I've already done it for the first boss. I did it with the first boss by accident completely, so... Uh, I don't know, hopefully, which the bosses do get a lot more difficult. I'll hope uh, that I can get a pretty good run at some point so that way I can get all of the achievements because I think that would be kind of nice. Got another tarot card here. Um, I don't think we're planning on really doing a whole lot in this run, so we'll get Black E4 and then uh, just try to get a little bit more damage off. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Just try to get out of here at some point. So, there we go. Every once in a while it'll ask you or it'll basically give you the option of getting like a different weapon I'm not a huge fan of these hammers to be honest because they're so slow, but they do a lot of damage uh, So that can be really nice So we actually got another tarot card here, which is really nice Okay, so this one's a shiny tarot card or a holographic I guess you could say maybe uh, which basically means that it's going to Double or just I guess maybe an increase on whatever the modifier would be that you get from it, which is kind of nice so go over here this will be just a room where there's a villager uh, and I'll have to fight or I guess they're cultists, not villagers but uh, there will just be enemies that sort of spawn in these rooms and then you have to beat wave after wave you can see the these little things on the ground right here signify which wave you're on but uh, yeah the hammer actually does a lot of damage I'm just I'm not a fan of like slow attack speed weapons most of the time in games so not my first choice I wouldn't say but either way, we can rescue this guy. That means he'll go back to the cult and then he'll be on like the little induction stone or whatever. So that way, whenever we get done uh, here and we go back, we can sort of like, you know, bring him into the village if we need him. Um, now we're on the actual boss stage. You do have to run around in here like it's a normal, like, you know, room to room scenario. And then once you get to the final room, it will actually be the boss. So let's try to make our way through here. Uh, there are different kinds of weapons as well, which is really cool. Like, so you can see I have that little star thing up in the top left of my character. That is, that means I have a crit ready. Um, different weapons have different, like, bonuses. So there's, like, weapons that can crit more often, or there's weapons that poison. Um, there's godly weapons, which are, like, really, like, rare to roll. Um, so, like, this is just a regular razor. It just... It's just a dagger that is faster but does less damage. This one is necromantic, so it'll summon ghosts every once in a while when you kill things. Uh, so that's kind of nice. It is a better hammer than what I have. I kind of like the crits, uh, but just because it's going to have better base damage, I'll, I'll take it. Uh, we do have a holographic card here as well. This one's actually pretty good uh, when attacked, 10% the chance of negating damage. We'll go with the damaging card, though, uh, just because I'm, I don't think this will be too bad. Um... All right, actually, this might be kind of bad because I'm fighting a witness. Uh, it's not. Okay, we're, we're dealing a really good amount of damage. Plus, I have one of the best spells in the game. We'll just go ahead and spam a couple of those, get rid of some of these ads. And then we should be able to drop um, like a, a rare item or whatever because we fight this guy because he's a witness, I'm pretty sure. But I could be wrong on that. I'm still not 100% on some of the mechanics of the game. Alright, he did not drop what I thought he was going to drop. Okay, anyway. Um, so now, at the end of this, once you beat the boss, you can choose between three different things. Uh, honestly, I don't really need anything at this point because I've beaten the game. 
but um, you get a big chest with a whole bunch of stuff in it. And then you can choose to leave the dungeon, or if you've completed the area completely and beaten the boss for the area, you can actually just progress on and continue your run if you have, like, good stuff. Which, this is okay stuff. This isn't bad. I would maybe consider running this, but I don't really need to run in this area anymore. So, we're going to call it there. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Super cool game. You just collect resources, come back to your, you know, village and everything. And, uh, I don't know, collect devotion, upgrade your stuff, uh, get new power-ups and stuff like that, get new rituals and sermons and stuff, so that way you can make sure that your villagers are happy, or whatever the case may be. You can build all kinds of different stuff. Um, I think there's some stuff that I need to, uh, upgrade that I never really ended up messing with once I sort of got all of the things. Like, this one right here needs to be upgraded to the gold version or whatever. But, um, yeah, I, all of this stuff was placed, so, I mean, it's just a matter of, you know, coming up with a, a fun, you know, I guess scheme for, or like layout plan for your uh, your village and sort of making it to the best of your ability and, I don't know, taking advantage of the different things that you have because I have farms which give me food and, you know, healing bay if they get sick and janitor station because they'll help clean up and outhouses where they use the bathroom instead of just using it out in the woods which is, you know, not good because then it brings down your cleanliness or whatever so then they get sick more often or whatever. Um, I don't know. There's a whole lot that goes into it, and it's really fun. You can even send them on, like, little missionary trips, and they'll do their own thing and bring back resources and stuff, which is just really fun. I don't know. It's really cool game. Love the art style. Very cute character designs and stuff like that. Really drew me in, and uh, honestly, it was it was super fun. I think it's $25 normally. If you can pick it up on sale, like, if it's ever on sale and you're not that interested in it, like, to buy it at full price, I think if you can get it on sale, it would be 100% worth it for sure. Uh, but even then, I think for the $25 price point, the game was super fun. Uh, definitely, like, it, you, you get into the game sometimes, and you, you spend a lot more time than you're anticipating because it really just kind of sucks you in and you're like oh well I could do this or I could go ahead and get that out of the way or like you know my people are you know almost filled up the bar right here so I might be able to get another upgrade soon um, I don't know there's just a whole bunch of different stuff that goes into it you can cook for the villagers because obviously they might starve so you gotta worry about getting their food up and everything like that but I don't know really really cool either way thank you guys so much for watching hopefully you guys enjoyed the game if you want to pick it up by all means it's on steam and i think they have it on switch and stuff like that as well i think it's on consoles too so i mean really you can play it on whatever console you use but uh either way that's it for me feel free to subscribe and all that good stuff if you want to and uh, i'll see you guys later